Hi everybody, this is Miss Heather from the Hagerstown Public Library and today we are going to be doing Rosie Bevere Engineer Inspired Steam Project. This is called um, Paper Plate Hovercraft. So like I said, this is inspired by Rosie Bevere Engineer by Andrea Beatty and just illustrated by David Roberts. This gave me a lot of inspiration to look online and go searching for a steam project that was associated with this awesome book um this is what i found and came up with so let's get started okay so you're going to need a paper plate okay kind of got a bigger thicker one um you're going to have to use you're going to need some scissors two straws i these are what are called milkshake straws they're a little bit thicker than your normal straw and a lot longer um I have included the two of these in your packets to come pick up this Tuesday after 11. Um, you will need a balloon, which I did not provide a balloon this time, um, kind of forgot, and a lot of people already have some balloons, but they're really cheap and easy to go get at our local dollar store, okay? And then you're going to need some, it called for duct tape, but I didn't have any, so I had some like heavy duty moving and or packing tape, okay? So the first step you're gonna do is take your scissors if you're an older child if you're not please have somebody that was responsible the scissors an older sibling an adult um, a guardian whoever um, you're with um, poke a hole in the center here to make sh and make sure it's kind of a generous hole put it in the center right here right so I'm gonna poke a hole and make sure your straw goes through which that's what I already pre-done Okay, so you want it, because this is a hovercraft, we're gonna make a hovercraft, okay? So you want it to be able to be flush with the table. You wanna cut about half of your straw off, so about here or so, okay? So you can either keep this or pitch it, whatever you wanna do. And then you're gonna take your balloon, okay? Actually first, we're gonna tape this down. So I'm gonna tape it, it might be a little bit loud, but that's okay. You don't want any, 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 any air getting in or out of this so this it can hover. So you're going to cut a couple slits here so it'll stay smooth and be able to get through there. Okay. Slide this around here. Do the th same thing on this side. Okay. I'm going to add a couple pieces one piece on the left side and one piece on the left okay so because i don't want to have any air escape but you know what if it fails it fails and part of this story is about a little girl who's an engineer and nobody really knows that she hides and makes her things by the moonlight and she has she does inventions and engineers these things for relatives. She's done all kinds of things. And then one day she has a long distance relative, Aunt Rose, who's inspired by Rosie the Riveter. Epic women's workforce during World War II. So, she is inspired by her aunt to do all kinds of things. And one of the things she's inspired to do is make a flying machine. So. Once you've got all this taped up, you're going to take your balloon, wrap it around here, okay, about halfway down, but you need to make sure you have enough, um, one, it, that it stays on there, and two, that you have enough um, balloon at the end of it to stick up and can hover over, float over. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take so this is what the bottom of it should look like it'll be flush so it will sit flat on your table without moving around okay so for this next part I'm gonna take this other straw your second straw you have in your packet try to push it through this other um, straw here insert it like so you'll have to do some pinching and rolling around but you can get it okay then what we're going to do is blow up their balloon, okay? Okay. 
Okay, it's not going to do great. Let's see what we can get out of this, okay? Okay, sometimes things fail. And that is a part of engineering and a great part of this lesson and book that scientists do every day. I just failed at this and I'm not upset. I think it's something to show you guys and something to learn from. But what should really happen is once you get your air put in your balloon um, and then you pinch it off, okay? You'll have, imagine this is filled up, you pinch it off here and then once you get it on your tabletop or whatever flat surface you're on, you let this go and this will actually, the air will go through this straw, through the bottom of the plate, right? And it'll start hovering and moving around. I'm kind of happy this failed because it shows you guys that even the most brilliant engineer, scientist, anybody that's done everything, anything, have failed and will fail. That's where you get your greatest idea is in the failure. So, let me give you some facts about Rosie the Riveter and all the women that worked and also facts about hovercrafts, okay? So, the first one, the first credited, okay, first credited hovercraft was created by Christopher Cockerell and gained the first patent in 1954. So, people have been toying with the idea of hovercrafts and futuristic crafts since the 50s and 60s, but really, that's when it got big. Really, someone, um, a gentleman, oh gosh, back in the 1700s, actually started toying with the idea of some kind of hovercraft, but for the age he was in, in the time, the technology was not there, and he was not able to keep going with that project. So it just kind of continued on to the next scientist and engineer, and through the decades and the years, we get the first patent in 1954. Um, some military hovercrafts have been known to travel over 350 plus miles. Now, obviously, that's not something us civilians have access to, or that would be a little insane, but I think fun at the same time. Um, another thing is um, the fastest hovercraft reached 85 miles an hour in 1995 that is insane that is as fast it is faster than the 55 and 60 mile per hour speed limit we have here in indiana um and then also so here's your rosie the riveter stuff between 1940 and 1945 that's when world war ii was going on and all of our men were enlisted or drafted to go to war in europe or japan wherever they were needed in africa wherever they were needed um the percentage of females working outside of the home was only 27% because you got to remember that time a lot of the times a female will stay home take care of the homestead and do those kinds of things raise their kids babysit things like that um not simple work but still um so by that time during World War II at the height nearly 37% of the women were working in a factory in a shipyard doing something, munitions, um, doing something to help the war effort. If they weren't doing that, they were doing other things outside of the home to help, um, to help the boys in war and our allies, okay? So one of four married women, or even some single women, a lot of single women went to the workforce and did their duty and their jobs um, to keep things going for the war and supplies. Um, also, there are th three different women at some periods and times that were credited with the Rosie the Riveter look. Um, multiple pictures have been snapped of them working in the factories. Um, there is one currently that is credited with the original Rosie the Riveter um, picture that was inspired by Norman Rockwell and a couple other artists um, that is famously known as the Rosie Riveter. We can do it. Poster. They put out excessively during that time um and, but the most accepted right now that i could find truth is naomi parker frawley um she was 90 plus years old and um had actually seen a few years before that had actually seen the original picture of her and she was out of alameda california working at one of the um shipping yards or um one of the factories that actually did um, things for the war effort. So 
today. Like I said, this was inspired by Rosa Revere Engineer. It's a great book. Pick it up and come read it. It'll be in the children's section. I will maybe put this out as well. This video airs every Tuesday. These videos, excuse me, these steam videos air every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Um, they will be on our Facebook page and then eventually be uploaded to Hagerstown's um, YouTube page, which is so fun and it has, you know, a backlog categories of um, videos that I've done in the past and starting the STEAM projects. Um, I hope you have more success with this than I did. Um, I'm Like I said, I'm kind of happy it failed just to show you that engineers go through this every single day to perfect the art and the craft of what they're working on. There's a lot of trial and error in everything that is invented in what we do. So this is Miss Heather and this is STEAM. Bye!